uh, and that is uh, a certain percentage of the time, not a whole lot, but it's definitely going to come up. Everyone is going to fold, and now it's just between you and the other blind. I really suggest uh, that you start to play quite aggressively in, that, in those situations. Uh, blind versus blind play um, is, is very important in No Limit Hold'em, and if you can try and win 60, 70 percent of those hands, uh, that's going to do you very well, particularly in tournaments. Now I'd like to look at a specific trouble spot, and that would be the ace-10 uh, versus the 6-5 of clubs. And what we're going to look at is why there are many times in No Limit Hold'em where the 6-5 of clubs is a much better hand than the ace-10. And that is, if, if you're in a hand where someone has opened the pot and another player has called, you really need to pay attention to situations like that, particularly three-handed situations, and you need to realize that hands don't have an absolute value in No Limit Hold'em. It depends on the situation. So when you're up against one opener, I'd much prefer to have the ace-10 than the 6-5. In fact, I might re-raise with an ace-10 against the right player if I really felt like maybe my ace-10 was good. But when you're playing in a three-way pot, you need to readjust the value of these hands. The reason why an ace-10 isn't nearly as good as a 6-5 of clubs in a three-handed situation is let's look at a situation where someone has opened with two jacks and someone with ace-queen is called and now it comes to you in the big blind. Well, you know, again, ace-10 is a better hand to have against two jacks, certainly. But it turns out that the 6-5 of clubs is going to win much more often than the ace-10 offsuit here. If you look at ace-10 versus these two hands, there is almost no way for ace-10 to beat these two hands. If the flop comes a 10, you're going to lose to the two jacks. And if the flop comes with an ace, you're going to lose to the ace-queen, the higher kicker. So really, the only possible way for you to win this pot is if the flop comes both an ace and a 10. Or, of course, if it came jack, queen, king, but again, one of your opponents has two jacks, so it's going to be kind of hard for that to come. And even if it comes a, a jack, queen, and a king, uh, you are up against three jacks so that you could easily lose that pot. Meanwhile, if you have a hand like 6-5 of clubs, certainly you know, if you call just a normal opening raise before the flop and you have a reasonable number of chips behind you to play with, um, most of the time you're not going to flop much and you're going to go away. Um, but every once in a while you are going to catch a really big flop and particularly against the overpair, you might win a very big pot. So again, you, you always need to be thinking about moving certain hands up in value and other hands down in value, depending on the situation. And those factors are how many chips do you have, how big a pot can you win, uh, and are you up against one player, two players, three players, or four players. Certainly, hands like 6-5 are going to go up in value the more people that are in the pot, and hands like ace-10 go up in value the fewer people in the pot. And likewise, a hand like ace-10 has much higher value if you have short chips, and a hand like 6-5 suited has much higher value if you have a large stack and you're playing against a large stack. So you need to be factoring all these things in as you adjust the values of your hands. And, and this is going to help you move away from the fundamental strategies of the sheet and to become a more unpredictable player. Okay, we're now going to look at some more specific examples of why it can be very dangerous in No Limit Hold'em to be playing sort of medium-high cards, a hand like Jack-10 offsuit, uh, particularly calling raises from reasonably tight players uh, who have opened up in middle or early position. Uh, and uh, we're going to look at a couple of flops that you might be looking to flop with a hand like Jack-10, and we're going to see why even when you catch what seems like a good flop, it can be very dangerous. Uh, when you play a hand like jack-10 offsuit. So our first flop here is a jack, a five, and a deuce. Uh, and certainly this is about as good a flop as you could ask for. I mean, obviously there are, there are better flops, but this is a good flop. The highest card on the board is a jack, and you have a jack, and you have a reasonably good kicker with a 10. Um, but if we look at a common distribution of the kinds of hands that you might be up against, I think I'll be able to show you how you're probably either going to win a small pot when you flop the best hand, or you might lose a big pot um, if, if you run into, um, a, if, if you get an unlucky uh, situation where your opponent has the right matchup against you. So if we look at some of the kinds of hands that your opponent might have raised with in early or middle position, uh, you're going to see here, I'm going to look at a couple of these hands here first, uh, where you actually have flopped the best hand. 
Uh, so, you know, certainly your opponent may have raised with two nines, or he might have raised with ace-king. These are, these are common, good, strong opening hands. And obviously the ace-king has missed the flop completely, so certainly he's not going to lose a big pot to you. But now we look at these other two hands, and certainly someone having an overpair, like a pair of aces or a pair of kings or a pair of queens, you're going to be in real big trouble against a pair of kings. Uh, you have about a 20% chance of winning the pot with a uh, pair of jacks with a 10 kicker against an overpair. Um, also, your opponent could have raised with a hand like ace-jack. And now here's the situation where you were dominated before the flop, the disaster scenario has happened, the jack has come, you have jacks with a 10 kicker, your opponent has jacks with an ace kicker, and, uh, and you're in really, really big trouble. You have, you have much smaller chance than 20% of winning this pot. Um, but we also can look at another flop and see how against this same variety of hands, you're, you're still in big trouble. Um, and certainly, you know, you wouldn't mind flopping two pair with a hand like jack 10. Uh, but sometimes, you know, the flop comes not exactly how you'd like it. So you've hit two cards that you love to see on the board, but instead of a deuce being the other card, and really it's a bit much to ask, you know, to flop top two pair and not have any of the straight cards out there. But if the flop were to come, a flop like jack, ten, queen, you can see you're in big trouble um, against most of these hands. Now, first of all, let, let's look at the best hand you could be up against, and that would be the ace-jack. Uh, you know, the ace-jack even has a pretty decent chance of winning this pot. Um, if, if the next card were to come a king or an ace or a queen, uh, you would lose. Um, also, the ace-jack's probably not going to lose a really big pot to you. I mean, if, 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 if you make an all-in bet here for, for a large amount, the ace-jack's probably going to fold and you're not going to win a big pot. Now, if we look at the two nines, uh, again, obviously, if it comes an eight or a king, he's going to make a straight. So he has a nice up and down straight draw. He's going to win a third of the pots. But again, if you start betting heavily, he's going to get away from the two nines. So you aren't going to win a very big pot against that hand. If you're up against a big pair, like a pair of aces or here a, a pair of kings, um, you know, you're, uh, you've, you've caught your great flop. The two kings hasn't even improved his hand, but he's still almost 50-50 to win this pot. Um, if, if the flop comes any of an ace, a nine, a king, or a queen, he's going to win the pot. So even here in a situation where the two kings hasn't improved his hand and you've improved your hand greatly, the odds of this hand are almost 50-50. There are actually 13 outs in the deck that give the two kings the best hand. Any ace, any nine, any king or any queen, and he is going to have your hand beat. So even though you've, you've hit a fantastic flop and he hasn't improved his hand, you're only 50-50. And then, of course, there's the disaster scenario, but certainly a very likely hand for your opponent to have would be ace-king. Now you have two pair and your opponent has a straight, and you're probably going to lose a really big pot. So uh, one of the things you really want to avoid are these are, are calling with hands like jack 10, 9, 8, queen 10. These are the kinds of hands that even when you flop something good, you very often run into a hand that has you crushed, and you end up losing big pots. And when you do flop the best hand, usually your opponent has, has, has pretty well missed the flop, and he's not going to pay you off in a big way. Okay, we're now going to look at why a hand like 6-5 suited in many situations in No Limit Hold'em can be a stronger hand than a hand like Jack-10. And one of the things you'll notice right away is that it's a much smaller hand than Jack-10. And that's actually an advantage when you're calling a raise. Um, and again, I want you to be very particular and not be calling too much with a hand like this. But there will be some situations where this can be a profitable hand. And I'm going to show you some of the kinds of flops you're looking for, and you'll see why, as opposed to the jack-10, when you flop a good hand with a hand like 6-5, you're almost certainly going to beat some of the stronger hands uh, that may have raised from an earlier middle position. So, uh, you know, certainly the kinds of flops that you're trying to get are flops like deuce-3-4, or, and I'm going to show you how these all, or 3-4-7, or 478 or even 789 are all pretty safe uh, to have a, a, a very good chance of beating the standard hands that you might be up against. And again, we're going to look at some of those standard hands that you might be up against. Um, all, all of these flops that I showed, the 234, the 347, the 478 or the 789, 
are basically 100% to beat any of these hands. Now, I mean, obviously, once you get into the 7, 8, 9, um, a hand